Hi everybody, it's Miss Maze here, um, and Nala, <laughs> so she'll be just in the background here laying. We are going to be reading 101 Dalmatians today, and we're going to be reading it out of another one of my childhood books. It's a little broken, so don't worry about that. The pages still work all the same. So, 101 Dalmatians. You may have watched the movie, now we're going to read the book. Hi, my name is Pongo. This story began one beautiful spring day. Roger, my pet, was busy trying to write a song. He's a musician and practically married to his work. I thought life would be more interesting if we had a companion. So I was looking out the window for a suitable mate. Two, really. One for Roger and one for me. That's when I saw her, a beautiful Dalmatian. Her human looked nice, too. Perfect, I decided. It took some quick thinking to get Roger away from his work, but soon I was able to convince him to go for a walk. I spotted them as soon as we entered the park. The Dalmatian was named Perdita. She was wonderful, but as usual, Roger had his head in the clouds. He barely noticed Perdita's human, Anita. Sometimes I wonder about these human beings. Finally, I wound my leash around their legs and tipped them into the pond. That got them to notice each other all right. It also got Perdita to notice me. Well, before long, Roger asked Anita to marry him, and Perdita agreed to marry me too. It was a beautiful double wedding. After that, our house became a paradise for dogs and their humans. We were even happier when we discovered that Perdita was expecting puppies. When the big day came and I saw those 15 little white balls of fluff, I was the proudest father on the block. Unfortunately, Cruella de Vil had to burst in and shatter our peace. I heard that Perdita and Pongo have 15 puppies, Cruella said, pulling out a checkbook in a pen. How much do you want for all of them? Anita tried to be polite. After all, she had known Cruella in school, but no matter how much money Cruella offered, Roger was firm. The puppies are not for sale, he said. Cruella was so angry she stormed out of the house, shouting threats. I had the feeling she meant trouble. So there is Cruella in her big white coat. Over the next few weeks, the puppies grew quickly. They were such fun. They loved to watch television. Their hero was a dog called Thunderbolt. Sometimes they even barked and growled when the bad guys appeared on the screen. One evening, Perdita and I went out for a stroll with Roger and Anita. We left the puppies at home with Nanny. She was the one who looked after us all. Nanny had just put the puppies to bed when the doorbell rang. It was two shady-looking men who said they worked for the electric company. Nanny was suspicious and wouldn't let them in, but they pushed their way past her. Where do you think you're going, she cried. Nanny tried her best, but she couldn't stop them. Soon they found what they were after, the puppies. When we got home, the puppy's basket was empty. Roger called the police right away. Our 15 Dalmatian puppies have been stolen, he told them. I don't know who could have done this, but please, you must find them for us. Perdita and I were not about to wait for the police to solve the kidnapping. We decided to take matters into our own hands. The next evening, I used the twilight bark to send out word of the kidnapping. What a racket. I'm sure no one in the city got much sleep that night. But it worked. The dogs in the city were the first to hear the news. They barked the message to the Towser, to Towser the Bloodhound and Lucy the Goose, who lived out in the country. What is it? What's all the gossip? asked Lucy. Fifteen puppies stolen, answered Towser. We'd best send the word along. It will be up to me to reach the colonel. Then Towser began to bark with all his might, passing the message on to the colonel, an old English sheepdog. The colonel and his friend Tibbs, the cat sent to work, set to work immediately. I just remembered, Tibbs set, told the colonel. Two nights passed, I heard the puppies barking at the old DeVille mansion. That place has been empty for years. Something fishy is going on over there, the, the colonel said. Let's go have a look. Sure enough, there were signs of activity at the old mansion, so the colonel sent Tibbs in to get a closer look. What a scene! 
Two tough-looking men named Horace and Jasper were watching television, and all around them were spotted puppies. Tibbs snuck closer to one of the puppies. Are you one of the fifteen stolen puppies? Tibbs whispered. There's ninety-nine of us all together, answered the pup. Meanwhile, the colonel had passed on the news that the puppies had been found. Of course, upon learning this, Perdita and I raced to rescue our pups. Tibbs knew there was no time to waste when he overheard Cruella de Vil arrive at the house and began talking to Horace and Jasper. She was planning to make spotted coats out of the puppies. I've got no time to argue, she shouted. I want the job on those puppies to be done tonight. We'll get on with it as soon as the show's over, Jasper said to Horace after Cruella left. Quick, Tibbs whispered to the puppies. Follow me and don't make a sound. You're in danger. I've got to get you out of here now. The puppies were frightened but they did as they were told. Tibbs led the puppies to a hole in the living room wall. Then, just as he was pushing the last pup through, Horace and Jasper noticed the dogs were missing. Jasper grabbed a fireplace poker, and Horace picked up a broken chair leg to use as a club. Then they started searching every corner of the old mansion. Quickly, Tibbs hid the puppies under the staircase. Shush, the cat whispered. But just then, the flashlight's beam lit up their hiding place. Oh no. Perdita and I barely arrived outside the mansion when we heard Horace and Jasper shouting. Hurry, something's going on in there, I said. We burst through the window growling and quickly went to work, saving our puppies. I latched onto Jasper's leg and soon had him on the floor, while Perdita made short work of Horace. In the, be in the meantime... Tibbs had managed to get the puppies safely out of the mansion. The colonel was waiting for them outside and led them to safety at his farm. Soon, Perdita and I were reunited with the puppies. We planned to rest at the colonel's farm for the night, but when Horace and Jasper showed up, we ha all had to move on. The weather was getting much worse. It was hard for the puppies to walk in the deep snow. Fortunately, we continued to get help from our friends. A collie who lived on a farm in the area came out to meet us. We just about lost hope, he said. We have shelter for you at the dairy farm across the road. You can all rest and get an early start in the morning. Thank goodness, I said. Three cows watched as Perdita led the puppies into the barn. Oh, the poor little dears, said Princess. They're completely worn out and half frozen. Mother, I'm hungry, one of the puppies said. Do you like warm milk, Princess said. Come and get it, kids, said Queenie. It's on the house. The puppies lapped up all the milk they could drink, and then they settled down to sleep. But the next day at dawn, we were on the run again. A Labrador retriever was waiting for us in the next village. He gave us shelter and explained that he had arranged a ride home for us in the back of a van. Just then, we spotted Cruella de Vil cruising through the village in her car. Nearby, Horace and Jasper were searching for us on foot. Oh, Pongo, Perdita said, how will we get into the van without her seeing us? Good question. Then I had an idea. We'll all roll in soot, I said. She's looking for Dalmatians, not Labradors. Soon we were all black from head to tail. Perdita and the lab led the first batch of puppies right past Horace and Jasper and into the waiting van. Look, Jasper, Horace remarked as the puppies trotted past him. Do you suppose those dogs could have, could have disguised themselves? You idiot, Jasper laughed. Dogs don't paint themselves black. Those dogs are somewhere in this village, Cruella yelled to Horace and Jasper. Now go find them. The final batch of puppies had almost made it to the van when... Splat! Drops of melting snow fell on the puppies. Small white spots began to appear on their backs. Corella looked more closely. Her brain started ticking. White spots on black dogs? Of course! After them, after them, she screamed. We all made a run for it. Then, just as I lifted the last puppy safely into the van, the engine roared to life and we were all on our way to London. I'll catch up with them yet, Cruella said, stepping on the gas pedal.
Cruella raced after the van and rammed into it. She was trying to force us off the road. We cringed in fear, wishing our driver could go faster. Then I saw the blue truck driven by Horace and Jasper. They had taken a shortcut. Now they were barreling down the road, trying to cut off our van. But instead, they smashed into Cruella's car. Bang! Crash! Cruella, Horace, and Jasper went flying through the air and landed in a pile of snow. They would not be able to cause any more trouble. A little later, at the house in London, Nanny heard faint barking. The barks got louder. Suddenly, the kitchen door burst open, and a pack of black dogs scampered in. One of the big dogs jumped on Anita's lap and tried to lick her face. Why, it's Purdy! Anita cried, and all the puppies! Then she looked again. There must be a hundred of them, she said in amazement. One hundred and one, said Roger, counting, including Perdita and Pongo. What a family! Everyone was delighted, even Nanny, who had quite a job on her hands trying to get all of us cleaned up. What will we do with them all? asked Anita. We'll keep them, said Roger. We'll buy a big place in the country and live there. It'll be a plantation, a Dalmatian plantation. Roger was so pleased that he sat right down at the piano to write a song, and we all gathered around him just happy to be home right. so there you see them all at the piano finally back together that concludes today's read aloud um nala enjoyed seeing you all and we'll see you next time i miss you guys so much <laughs>